Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about the organization of the adrenal glands. This is a topic that's really important to understand in a variety of settings, such as the endocrine system, because of course the adrenal gland is going to release a lot of hormones. But also when you talk about other body systems, such as the kidneys, it turns out that we're actually going to have one of the hormones, that is aldosterone, that is acts on the kidneys. And so some other body systems, it might be important to understand the structure of the, of the adrenal glands, and that's going to um, relay its function. All right, so let's first talk about where the adrenal glands are. Well, the adrenal glands sit on top of the kidneys. So this is the right kidney over here, and what we can see is that the adrenal gland is kind of like a hat. The kidneys wear a hat. The hat is the adrenal gland. So this is the right adrenal gland. So there's one on each side. Um, and because they sit on top of the kidney, another name that you might see for the adrenal gland, it's not as commonly used, but it's called the suprarenal gland. Supra means above, and renal refers to kidney, so they're above the kidney. So they're suprarenal glands, right? So there's two of them. Now, each adrenal gland is organized into four separate regions. Um, we have three that are more superficial, and collectively these are called the cortex. We're going to talk about each one of these layers of the cortex individually. They all have a separate function. And then the central part of the adrenal gland is the medulla, or the adrenal medulla. And then at the end of the video, we'll actually look at the microscope image, the histology. First, let's talk about the adrenal medulla. So the adrenal medulla is a different type of tissue than the rest of the gland. All these three layers out here, the cortex, the adrenal cortex is endocrine tissue. Okay. The adrenal medulla is nervous tissue, and it's going to actually play a role in its function. So the adrenal medulla is going to synthesize substances called catecholamines, and there's three of them that it makes and releases. Those are epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. The vast majority of the, of the uh, released catecholamines are epinephrine, there's a little bit of norepinephrine, and then a very small amount of dopamine. Okay? And these are released directly into the blood, and particularly the epinephrine, they produce a fight or flight response. So they produce a sympathetic response. Okay? Now the stimulus for the adrenal medulla to release these catecholamines is activity of the sympathetic nerve. So there is a sympathetic nerve that is going to innervate the adrenal medulla. And so when the brain perceives that you need a fight or flight response, you need to respond to something, so you're going to produce these catecholamines, the sympathetic nerve generates a bunch of action potentials that innervate the medulla, and those action potentials trigger the medulla to release these substances via exocytosis. So they're released via exocytosis directly into the blood and they act very, very quickly. And to give you an understanding of how fast this actually occurs, that is the activation via the sympathetic nerve, release of these substances via the adrenal medulla into the blood, and then binding to receptors. So to give you an understanding how fast this is, so that is the process of activation of the sympathetic nerve, action potentials, then release of these substances from the adrenal medulla, and then binding to receptors. It has to have that too. To give you an idea how fast that is, this has probably happened to everybody. Imagine it when you've been driving and you're kind of haphazardly paying attention, right? And a car pulls out in front of you and you, have, and you notice it. You, of course, get all shocked. You slam on your brakes. Your eyes probably dilate and you get, you're startled and scared for a few minutes afterward. How fast does that occur for you to see the car and get that fight or flight response? It's really, really fast. It's actually very amazing how fast the body does this. That sympathetic nerve, when it fires, those, those catecholamines are released within microseconds, very fast. And then they, of course, bind to receptors, and you get a fight-or-flight response. Okay? But that's the function of the adrenal medulla. It is not activated through hormones. Okay? Um, it is activated through the sympathetic nerve. The medulla is the central part of this. If we move to the cortex, it's divided into three layers. Okay? The cortex of the adrenal gland, that is the adrenal cortex, is glandular tissue. It is endocrine tissue. So let's first start by talking about the superficial layer, the zona glomerulosa. 
Okay. Now, if you're at this point when you're learning about the adrenal gland, you probably have not studied the kidneys. Okay, there's a part of the kidney that is called the glomerulus, and the glomerulus is important in filtering the blood. Okay, that's actually the major function of the kidneys. And so that's where this gets its name, the zona glomerulosa. Okay, the zona glomerulosa will release a hormone into the blood called aldosterone. And the trigger for this is actually this other hormone called angiotensin 2. So angiotensin 2 is released in response to um, low blood pressure. And so one of the functions of angiotensin 2, it comes over here to the zona glomerulosa and it triggers that region to release aldosterone, which then comes over here and acts on the kidneys. Okay, um, That is specifically um, one part of the kidney that is that we'll talk about much later in the urinary system. Okay, That's an example of hormone-induced hormone release. Angiotensin 2 triggers the release of another hormone, aldosterone. But that's done through the zona glomerulosa. If we go deep to that, we have what's called the zona fasciculata. Okay? This zone releases something called cortisol. So it's important to understand that most organisms release cortisol as their glucocorticoid. Rodents, such as mice and rats, actually release corticosterone. We're not going to talk about the reasons for that in this video, but humans release cortisol. If you have an anatomy and physiology course, it's probably about humans, so go with cortisol. And it's going to be released in response to another hormone, ACTH. This is a hormone that's released from the anterior pituitary, and it's adrenocorticotropic hormone. So it travels in the blood from the pituitary to the zona fasciculata and triggers these cells to release cortisol. And the function of cortisol, or corticosterone in the rodents, is just to ensure energy availability to vital tissues like the brain. Brain is really important for that. So cortisol has a glucose-sparing effect for the brain. Okay? But that's the zona fasciculata. Now this other layer right here, which is the deepest of the cortical layers, deepest of the adrenal cortex, that is, is not really talked about a whole lot, but I'm going to actually mention a few cool things about it. This is called the zona reticularis. The zona reticularis plays a role in secreting androgens. Now, I didn't include it here, but I'll go ahead and add it. The reticular layer, that is the zona reticularis, uh, releases these mainly in response to ACTH, but also CRH from the hypothalamus. Mainly ACTH, though. And what these hormones are is they're androgens, and they produce secondary sex characteristics. The two most common ones, which are uh, present in both males and females, are androstenedione and dehydroepiandrosterone, also called DHEA. Now, they're called androgens, which means they're masculinizing hormones. They're male hormones. Now, that being said, they are far weaker than testosterone much weaker than testosterone. And we, of course, know that men have a much higher concentration of testosterone than women do. But when we compare women to men, they have comparable levels of these two hormones, which are androgens. And these hormones explain why, naturally speaking, that is, women actually have armpit hair, axillary hair, or they have pubic hair. Okay, um, those regions where you have that hair growth are due to these androgens right here. Okay, now of course in a lot of cultures here in the United States, probably a lot of other places, um, women shave those regions for different reasons. Um, but naturally speaking, they have that hair there because they have these two hormones released by the zona reticularis. Okay, now. Obviously, women do not have facial hair, and that's because these two hormones do not produce facial hair. That is strictly testosterone and its metabolite dihydrotestosterone, which are what are present in much higher quantities in men. Okay? These two hormones do not produce facial hair. The only thing they do is really, uh, other than producing some other minor secondary sex characteristics, they produce the armpit hair and the pubic hair. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. But again, um, they're present in both males and females. Sometimes we kind of neglect the zona reticularis, but it's got some cool considerations right there. Okay. So again, cortex region, very different than the medulla region. The medulla region is, is controlled through nervous tissue, sympathetic nerve. It's activated through action potentials. The cortex regions, all three of them are activated in response to a hormone because they're endocrine tissue. So, 
for the zona reticularis and the zona fasciculata, they release in response to ACTH, whereas the zona glomerulosa will release aldosterone in response to angiotensin II. However, all three of these cortex regions are examples of hormone-induced hormone release. Okay. Now, this is really just a kind of a just a just a very simple organizer for the adrenal gland. But if we look at the histology, we'll see it's actually not that much different. Okay, so if we look at the outer layer of the of the adrenal gland, it's surrounded by a fibrous capsule. This is just to protect the adrenal gland in the same way that the kidney has a fibrous capsule or a renal capsule. Um, these three regions right here, they make up the cortex, and then this inner part right here is the medulla. Um, by nature of how they stain, you can tell a clear difference between the medulla and the cortex regions. If we look at the medulla, which is always central, it's internal or deep, we see that it's actually a little bit lighter in color than the, than the cortex up here. The other thing about the medulla is it has blood supply has blood supply through an artery, which is actually probably this right here. This is one of them. And then the blood is drained from the adrenal medulla through the central adrenal medullary vein. Okay, But the central part there is the medulla or medulla. I know I'm flipping between those two pronunciations. All right, here's the cortex. This is the outer part. And of course, we see the superficial layer is the zona glomerulosa. The inner one is the zona fasciculata. And then directly on the surface is the zona reticularis. Um, when you're looking at these, um, it can be a little bit difficult to tell the difference between them. If you kind of just know the general three layers, and they're really all about the same length. If we do look at the zona glomerulosa, though, what we'll see is that there's a lot more kind of whitish region interspersed there than we see in the, in the deeper two layers. Okay? So that can clue you in on where the zona glomerulosa is. If you look at the zona reticularis, pretty consistently all around, the zona reticularis is a little bit darker, just a hair darker than the zona fasciculata. That can also help you tell the difference of where, they're, where they kind of cut off. But in general, um, they're pretty much the same length or the same depth, I should say, all across the board. Um, so if I came down here, um, I would probably say from about right here, up to the fibrous capsule, that would be the zona glomerulosa. Um, of course, this is the medulla over here, so probably from that border to about right here would be the zona reticularis, and then of course in the middle would be the zona fasciculata. Okay, and you can, if you look really carefully, you can kind of tell the distinction between the layers. Um, they look slightly different, but you have to use your eyes really carefully on that. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense with the histology, and hopefully you have a good understanding of the functions of the adrenal gland as a whole. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.